December 2018, 17,000 feet over the South China Sea, Christopher's radar screen flared. Two hostile fighters locked in behind him. Radar tone, beep. On screen, two red triangles converged. Distance, closing fast. Time to impact. Seven seconds, he slammed the throttle forward, banking hard left. His jet shuddered under the G-force, but the enemy stayed on him, smart missiles adapting to every move. His hands hovered over the flight console, eyes locked on a small black and yellow switch, guarded under a flip cover. He hesitated. Using it meant revealing a classified weapon to the world. He flipped the guard open, his thumb pressed down. A deep mechanical whine filled the cockpit. Behind him, the AETP's adaptive intakes twisted, narrowing for high-altitude air compression. Internal vanes shifted, fan blades repitched, the entire engine reconfigured in mid-flight. A blast of thrust pinned him into the seat. His fighter shot straight up, pulling a vertical climb impossible for a normal engine. Missiles lost lock. In seconds, he'd punched through cloud cover. Christopher rolled inverted, dove back down. Now he was on their tail. With a squeeze of the trigger, two clean shots, the sky lit up with fireballs. Targets eliminated. The AETP, an adaptive engine that can morph mid-flight, designed for one purpose, to win air combat before the enemy even knows what's coming. It's one of the most lethal aerospace technologies humans have ever built. And if you're in its range, you're already history. Today we're tearing it apart piece by piece, revealing the insane engineering that makes it unstoppable. Buckle up. This is the insane engineering of AETP. In 2016, the Adaptive Engine Transition Program, AETP, was launched with the goal of developing and testing adaptive engines for the future sixth generation fighter programs, penetrating counter air, PCA, or next generation air dominance, NGAD, for USAF. The US Air Force assigned GE Aerospace, formerly GE Aviation, and Pratt and Whitney to develop the Adaptive Engine Transition Program, AETP. GE's version is the XA100 Adaptive Cycle Engine, while Pratt and Whitney's is the XA101. But in today's video, we'll talk only about XA100 by General Electric. The engine has a three-stage adaptive fan and seven-stage compressor, as well as a two-stage high-pressure and two-stage low-pressure turbine. Air enters through the inlet at subsonic or supersonic speeds. The purpose of the inlet is to slow, stabilize, and direct this air into the fan at the proper pressure and angle. Without this control, the downstream compressor would stall. The very first rotating stage the air meets in the XA100 is its three-stage adaptive fan. Unlike a fixed turbofan, this fan is built to decide in real time where the incoming mass flow goes. Air enters through the intake and immediately passes the variable inlet guide vanes, IGVs, pivoting blades that set the angle of attack on the first fan stage. These vanes, controlled automatically by the FADEC Full Authority Digital Engine Control, ensure smooth entry regardless of speed, altitude, or throttle change. The first fan stage accelerates the air and passes it through variable stator vanes, VSVs. 
These veins can rotate to straighten or redirect flow, stabilizing pressure ratios and preventing compressor stalls. Already, the air can be split. Part is directed into the engine core for compression and combustion, while the rest moves into bypass ducts. The second and third fan stages take this further. They provide additional compression for core-bound air, while also pushing bypass air with enough energy to generate quiet, efficient thrust during cruise. What makes the XA100 different is the introduction of a third stream of airflow, accessible right from these fan stages. This third stream is managed by flow control valves and ducts that the FADEC regulates. Here's how the split works. Core path. Air directed inward is compressed further by the seven-stage compressor for ignition. Bypass path. Air routed around the core provides steady, fuel, efficient thrust. Third stream. Air is shunted into a separate passage that can either absorb heat from the core and aircraft systems or be reintroduced later at the nozzle for a surge of thrust. The transition between these modes is seamless. The FADEC reads pressures, temperatures, and pilot throttle commands, then pivots IGVs, rotates stator vanes, and opens or closes the third stream valves within milliseconds. To the pilot, it feels invisible. To the engine, it is constant adjustment, keeping airflow perfectly balanced. So, within just these three fan stages, the XA100 can transform its entire operating character. A high bypass engine when efficiency matters, a low bypass turbojet when maximum thrust is demanded, and a thermal management system when excess heat needs to be dumped. This is the foundation of the XA-100's flexibility. Every other stage in the engine depends on this intelligent airflow management being precise and instantaneous. If you found this video valuable, don't just keep it to yourself. Share it, like it, and subscribe because the more we spread knowledge like this, the more we move humanity forward together. I'll see you in the next episode.